Hey Rockhounds, uh, back again. I've got a week off work, which is always nice. And I've just made a trip up into eastern Ontario, uh, visiting the Canton and the Hanlon Mines. Both of these particular mines are pretty typical of the phosphate mines in uh, eastern Ontario, late 1800s. Phosphate was in huge demand. Uh, it was used as a fertilizer in the soils uh, of the southern United States, more so than elsewhere. Uh, something to do with the tropics and the leachings of the soil. However, late 1800s, uh, the Mexican free-tailed bat was found to be producing phosphate-rich guano and nitrate-rich guano. And as a result, it was cheaper to mine from the caves. I know I did a, an interesting trip, which I detail in one of my books, um, up into a, a cave system known as Friar's Hole in West Virginia some years ago. And uh, we checked out what was known as the saltpeter mine. So phosphate from that was used both in fertilizer and the nitrates were used in the production of explosives, in particular gunpowder. Anyway, uh, in the... Uh, Eastern Ontario phosphate mines, uh, it's pretty common to find really beautiful blue and greenish crystals of uh, apatite. Uh, you're going to find uh, radioactives, uranite, things like that, cubes of uranite. Uh, you're going to find different types of feldspars, peristatite being a good example, Crystal Lake mine. Um, you're going to find uh, a great many other minerals associated with uh, the appetite deposits. Uh, in particular, those kinds of minerals that you would typically find in a pegmatite. So, on with the video. Smith Falls. Here we go. This is the old Nestle factory. As my brother-in-law informs me, which is now Canopy, where they grow lots of weed. Uh, I think we can get a tour. One of some of the locals has advised us they may give out free samples if we ask nicely. I think they're locked up, it's Sunday. I can smell the weed though. So I uh, just spoke to the security guy, he says as soon as the, the COVID situation's over, uh, we're more than welcome to come back and we can get a tour, which sounds really interesting. I'd like to see what they're doing. Um, so not only does Smith Falls have the canopy factory, it has also got this device. Not sure what it is. Here's your answer. Looks like it was a train bridge lifted up over the Rideau. So, we're uh, doing our hunt for the mines here. Uh, in particular, we're looking for the Hanlon Mine and the old Anthony Mine. Uh, we're just off Long Lake Road, and it's always a, a bit of a search to find these places, but it looks like we found the Hanlon real fast. This particular property, it dropped down 175 feet. I believe they were looking for lead. Uh, the country rock is a pyroxenite um, within which the lead was occurring. And down at the bottom of the shafts here, uh, they spread out, they say about 200 foot of drifting in either direction. They struggled constantly with a swamp down there. And uh, the swamp was constantly running into the mine works. It goes around that way. Somewhere here, we're having a, a little issue actually locating the 175 foot shaft but it's close by you can tell obviously all this material has come from way down below right all the quartzite and mica and stuff like that so here's some of the calcite with the uh, green apatite crystals this has obviously come from deep down clearly we've got quartz that's cool so the walls all around me a little higher up there's a fair bit of quartz and feldspar um, not exactly sure where the shaft is that went down. It will be filled with water when we do find it. But tons of debris up around the tops here. Leftover stuff. Um, you can search through that and hopefully find some galena as the traces of the lead from lower down. So again, they're dumping all debris outside from out of the mine. Here's your swamp again, giving up gas. Look at the gas bubbles coming up. So here we got, uh, right next to these huge, huge maple trees. You can see the mica that was coming out. Of course, the mica is always a good sign of a 
a decent pegmatite. Um, this whole pile here is mica. Enormous piece here. Look at this. Ah. Wow, yeah. Oh, look. Mica, quartz. So the vein here at the Hanlon mine, it was like um, 20 feet wide. So underneath all the scree, that's where your big vein is. This is just old debris that comes from underground. So when you're looking for stuff, obviously you can just start rolling boulders over. You'll find all sorts of goodies here. Okay, here's a test of true intelligence looking at me right now. Okay, how do I look different now from when I first walked in and started the video? What looks different? Notice the key is missing. My brother-in-law and I managed to hold our panic in check, retraced our path of travel. There it is. In the pocket. Nowhere other than in the pocket now. Nice uh, blue-green appetite here. Um, obviously there must be more of it in this little spot. Nice big piece here. Again, this is the whence they derived the phosphate in the 1800s. So I'm not really finding the, what I can be sure is the shaft itself, but uh, it's somewhere along the edge here of this swamp. Um, across the road there, we've got the old Anthony mine and a little bit further north of the uh, elbow there on the road, you've got uh, the Bryce's mine or Boyce's mine, one of the two. I can't remember, that was a very inconsequential one. The Hanlon here is probably the the main one and there's plenty of rock hounding opportunity in the piles of rubble. Um, lots of quartz, mica and possibly other smaller crystals. I saw some apatite and obviously you'll find possibly uh, galena, the lead, the lead sulfide crystal. So here we are at the old Canton mine. It's just like a little side digging. You can see the um, phlogopite mica quite obviously. Lovely sort of brassy color. Looks like someone's been digging up here. You got a bit of appetite, sort of a bluey green appetite. Kind of see that. Um, who knows what else is down here. Sadly I forgot my battery for my regular camera so I'm using my cell phone here. Um, pretty unfortunate but let's see what I was told there's some equipment around this area, so I'll see what we can find. So, continuation of this strange screwed up Monday. Having lost my camera, or at least not bought my camera battery, uh, I specifically intended to hit an antique store here. It's closed due to a death in the family. Now I can't find my car and I've been wandering in the bush for I don't know how long. <laughs> Bizarre. I have no idea how I did this loop. But uh, I heard the cars traveling out here on this little main road here. It's the old Kingston Road. I could hear the cars while I was kind of slugging through the woods there in my sandals, flip-flops. Uh, and obviously hitting the main road here, the old Kingston Road, I've managed to find my way back to the car. Uh, just very disorientating, but tons and tons of pits and uh, diggings, you know. There's tons of uh, phlogopite mica scattered all over the place. I will do a bit more looking here, but obviously I'm going to be a bit more careful and I'll be putting on my rock hounding shoes at the same time so I'm not slipping. So this is the Canton mine. It was worked in 1893 for phosphate. Extensive diggings through the forest. Um, it's, a, it's said to be a pyroxenite granite gneiss, although I thought I saw marble in that area. Apparently occurred along the contact with the uh, uh, peroxide. <laughs>